time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman who is giving a brilliant performance in the Broadway play, Major Barbara, who's just finished a picture in Tokyo called Joe Butterfly, who is about to co-produce a play called Speaking of Murder. That's the longest commercial a man has ever had on our panel. And now you're going to meet our new panelist, Burgess Meredith. I'd like to introduce a lady that you can admire in all the mediums and certainly can admire very much in life herself, Dorothy Kilgallen. And we're very proud tonight because one of our panelists has hit the bestseller list again with a book called The Life of the Party and a very funny one indeed. Who else but Bennett Sir? Now, here's a man who keeps this show running smoothly as silk most of the time, anyhow. Our panel moderator, John Charles Daly. And he'll pay for that most of the time, too, before tonight's out. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, we're up to our old tricks, trying to fool the panel. And we have some interesting occupations and a set that's coming apart. And uh, we'll do something with them before the night's out. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before our panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just 30 seconds. And now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please, sir? Right there. W. H. Brett, right, sir? That W stands for William, I would guess. That's right. And where are you from, Mr. Brett? Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Well, it's nice to have you with us. Of course, I'm no shaker height myself. No, that's no, that's bad. That's real bad. I'm sorry about that. Would you like to meet the panel just briefly? There they are. Wonderful looking quartet, aren't they? Well, I hope we like them later. Come on. <coughs> Sit down with me, if you will. Now, Mr. Brett, do you know how we keep score? I do, sir. Fine, then let's let everybody at home and our friends here in the theater, except my four friends over there, know exactly what your line is. All right, panel. Mr. William Brett is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Brett, you look rather intellectual. Would you say that your job was more uh, brain work than physical? Yes. But with some hesitation? Well, modesty is, as you know, a <laughs> splendid virtue. Do you work more indoors than out of doors? Yes. Do you work in what would be called a building rather than a, an aeroplane or something like that? Rather than what? Than an aeroplane or some other type of unusual enclosure. Yes. Uh, do you by any chance work for a non-profit making organization? Yes. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Uh, do you deal in services? No. Well, I would say this, if Mr. Brett would be willing to let me correct him, that we would have to accept under our term of reference that there is a service application here, and he does deal in a sense in a service, yes. Do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Could any of us on the panel 
avail ourselves of your services. More conference. No. I think because uh, we'd have to give you a no there, and you'll understand it subsequently. Is it because he's in Cleveland and we're in New York? <laughs> uh, well, the answer to the original question was no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> sir. Mr. Brett, to pursue uh, Dorothy's last line of inquiry, do you do whatever you do in or near Cleveland? No. That makes it two down and Thank eight you, to Dorothy. go, Miss Brent. <laughs> Uh, do you work for the government, Mr. Brett? Yes. Would it be the law enforcing branch of the government? No. That's they don't three enforce down. the law in his <laughs> branch. <laughs> three down and seven to go, Mr. Meredith. Would it be in the educational? No. And that's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, is it federal rather than state or local? Yes. Anything to do with any of the armed forces? No. And five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Mr. Brett, now, you are not in the, uh, anything to do with law enforcement or armed forces. We've established that. Have you got anything to do with either the uh, medical or educational facilities of the government? No. And that's six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Now, Mr. Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hold an office, uh to which you might be appointed? Yes. Do you, um... <gasps> wish you hadn't given me a yes. <laughs> Dorothy felt something come over her. May I have a conference to find out what it was? For, yes, 15 oh, I mean, seconds for a no conference. no guarantee with this, but could he have anything to do with money, like the treasury or the mint or something like that? That's not law enforcement or education. It's only law enforcing if you lift some of it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do you have anything to do with the Treasury Department in any way? Yes. Uh, what could he do with the Treasury a Department? <laughs> a team man. <clears throat> no more calls no. for conferences, please. All right. Would you not be considered a tea man? Would you, you not, not be, considered be considered a tea man? man? Yes, I would not be considered a tea man, is what he's about to yes, say. Yes, I would not be uh -huh. considered a Thank tea man. Thank you, Miss Brent. Do you work at the Mint itself? Yes. Do you, uh, do you work with uh, Ivy Priest in any way? No. She's gone. No. Where's she gone? real gone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, let's have a conference. She's Secretary of the Treasury. What? Do we know that he works in Cleveland? Early, we don't want to mislead you. We would have to agree, since you have already adduced that Mr. Brett has a relationship to the Treasury Department and, albeit, to the Mint itself, that there is a mutual affinity of employment here involving yes. uh, this oh, splendid yes. Miss oh, Priest that. that we would oh, have yes, to accept. Oh, yes, John, I'm with you. Yes, indeed, yes. So you may continue questioning. Yes. Well, now... Do you have anything to do with counting the billions of dollars that go in and out of the mint? Like, uh, what? Well, here right? we are again, aren't we? I mean, does he count the old money Maybe and change it for the new money? Well, yeah. I would uh, like to say this. I think we can assume that Mr. Brett does have a responsible position uh, in his relationship to the Treasury Department, and I would like to think that he kept some reasonable tab on what was going in and out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what the job is called, but if somebody calls the Mint and says, I would like to have a million dollars in new bills, would Mr. Brett be a man you'd contact for that sort of thing? I because I'd like to know. If anybody called the Mint and asked for a million dollars in new bills, <laughs> they wouldn't get Mr. Brett, would they? No. So we'll give you seven dollars. I'm glad to be go, Mr. Meredith. Now, uh, do you like the United States of America? I wanted to get one yes before. I... <laughs> you get yes. Uh, you have anything to do with the greenbacks themselves? No. Nothing. That either. makes it eight down and two to go, oh, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, you change. <laughs> 
Well, I know this is a fast no, but do you have anything to do with Fort Knox? Yes. <laughs> do you run it? More or less? Yes. What more do I need? <laughs> That's just an incidental assignment. Oh. Uh, do, you, do you keep tabs of the gold? With, keep tabs on the gold? Do you know how much gold we've got? Yes. We could only get to it? Yes. There's some title that obviously is escaping maybe, me. Maybe Secretary of the Treasury. I can't <laughs> no. Bullion man. He's a bullion man. Are you a, are you a big bullion man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to flip them all over because you're so close, but you got off on a sticky wicket, as the English say. In the mint, they don't have anything to do with those green bills. They yeah. mint coins. And this is the director of the United States Mint. Uh, yeah. Mr. William Brett. And I might say one thing, Mr. Brett is very sensitive about, I saw him for a moment before we came on stage, he said, you know, I really work for a profit-making organization. The Mint really makes money. How much money does the Mint make? Oh, we turn in from 24 to $75 million a year. To whom? As income. How do you do that? Oh, different friends. <laughs> oh, I think you've heard of seniorage and coin. Uh, Mr. Brett is going to pass among us with little samples. <laughs> I tried to get them, Dorothy. No, like, no well, the, like the, to, the like base metal content of the coins is often not in its individual price. Uh, the full value of the face amount of the coin itself, so that there is well, a... who makes the greenbacks? That's right. If the, the mint does... The Bureau of Engraving and, and Printing. Oh. Yeah, the mint makes all the coinage. And I must say, it's nice to know that Mr. Brett and Ivy Baker Priest, and we're very fond of them, who's been with us, uh, take care of all our money. I feel much better about my money now, and thank you very much, sir, for being our guest. Nice to have you. All right, panel. We got you that time, but it was very close. Let's see what we can do about a second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Oh, shadowy. <laughs> never had that. Kathleen and. Kathleen and. Oh, no, oh, that's not all, is there? There's more. And Fred Estian, is that right? <laughs> If you can try to find room there, you are from where, Mr. Estrin? London, England. From London, England, panel. And I don't know whether you know how we score. If you give the panel yes. a no answer, we flip cards, yes. ten no's, and you've won. Yes, now let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. Mr. and Mrs. Estgen are self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Sir. Mr. and Mrs. Estgen, have you got anything whatever to do with the entertainment field? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Would one say you were in trade, Mr. and Mrs. Estgen? Yes. Is there any product connected with this uh, business? Well, there's a product connected with it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we'd agree with that. A useful product? It is deemed so by some. Uh, is it a product that one might find in the home? No. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. 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 If Sorry, one went indoors. Uh, is it a product that would touch the person in any way? No, he, not in that sense. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, I think Mrs. Justin will yes. Right. says yes. It does touch the person. Yes. Uh -huh. Is it uh, anything the person might carry around with him or with her? Could do, yes. They could, under yes. some circumstances, yes. yes. Oh, is, is it ever put on the person in any way? Yes. Uh, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, let's give him a no on no, that one. We'll have to give you a no. It's not, not put, put on. on. Right. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. We, Burgess. We Burgess. are uh, trying to guess the, the uh, product yeah. here, as I guess it, but... Uh, I take it that it's not uh, essential that we uh, we guess that we've got to get something more than the profit. Is that a, than the product? 
Well, actually, if you get the product, we presuppose that would open right. a great many avenues uh, of examination. Is this a profit-making organization that, yes. you, that you work for? And uh, do the... Uh, do you go... Uh, do the people come to you? Yes, they do. They come to you for the uh, service yes. and so on that you run. And... Uh, let me see. Now, uh, they come to you. Uh, is, is the product, we'll go back to the product, is the product, uh, you say it's a, is it small enough to hold in the hand? Yes. yes. It's small enough to hold in the hand. When you got in the hand, what do you do with it? <laughs> Don't tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you often carry it in the hand? Yes. It, do, it, is, it, is, it is carried in the hand. Good uh, I take it it's not carried... I take it that it's not as much as carried in the hand more than any place else. Uh, the hand isn't the... No, I got a no there. You better phrase that. Uh, there's other places more important than the hand. Yes. 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 Uh, is this uh, for both men and women? Yes. yes. Yep. Uh, e, e, uh, let's see, how do you do it? What are the both men and women. Uh, uh, used by men and women? Mm-hmm. Uh, above the belt? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. Uh, b b uh b below the tie? Yes. Below the tie? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, wait yeah. a minute. Between uh, the neck and the, t and the belt, huh? Oh. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that there is a relationship at one time or another between the belt and the tie. What? <laughs> is it, is it, is it, uh, well, let's go, uh, then it can be above the neck, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's more essential to get it above the neck than below the neck? <laughs> well, well, I passed. I, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, All right, do you eat I, it? Yes. Did you ever eat one? Eat one? No. No, never no. ate one. That's no. three down and seven to go. Miss no. Kilgallen, I'm going to give you one more minute. Did well, you ever I, eat I two? Feel, <laughs> I feel Burgess has laid the blueprint, and uh, if any of us get it, it's all due to him. But is this possibly drinkable? Oh, yes. Would it be yes. more for adults than for children? Yes. Yes. Do run a pub. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Well, we'll flip all these anyway. We had a wonderful well, time. Well, well, well. I would say very quickly that Mr. and Mrs. Eschen run a pub in London called the Sussex, and pub comes from public house. Actually, it's a social center as much as anything. You serve only yes, ale, is. I believe, yes, don't you? Yes, it is. And they play snookers and darts, <coughs> darts and, and, and everything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So well, there we are. We're yeah. actually over here for the British travel, you know, to try and get some of you over to our inns of England next year. So we hope to see you. Well, I hope I can make it. I haven't been to England now for a good many years, and I want to come well, back very badly. Come. And I'll come Love to the Sussex. Spots. Oh, that'd be fine. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, we had a wonderful you. time having you with us. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's mystery. We come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I've asked my friends on the panel to please blindfold themselves. The blindfold's all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin it with our guest, Burgess Meredith. Well, now, he got more applause than we did. Uh, <laughs> is he... Is he... <laughs> or she? Is she or he in the entertainment business? Uh, what? Yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, have you been both on the stage and in the flickers? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Sir? Are you currently 
appearing in New York in either a motion picture at a big theater or a legitimate playhouse. I don't I hear a sound. It says that's two questions. Would you like to ask it one at a time? I'll take the guess one. Are you currently in a motion picture that's playing on one of the big Broadway cinemas? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Oh, well, that leaves the theater. Then instead of asking that outright, I'll ask you if you are in uh, the legitimate theater as opposed to the musical theater. I didn't hear You've got to stop grunting. Legitimate. <laughs> what? Legitimate. Legitimate. Oh, yes. good. Jolly good. Mr. Meredith? Uh, uh, are you in a straight show as against a musical show? Or has that been asked? That's what I just said. Yes. Oh, I thought you said, well, legitimate can be a uh, musical. Well, actually, that question has been uh, answered, oh. Burgess, so you can ask another one. That was All what Arlene right. was seeking. Uh, uh, is it a uh, comedy? Uh, yeah. Miss Gilgallon? Are you a leading man type rather than a character man? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Could it be possible that you're appearing in exactly the same play that Mr. Meredith is playing in? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Miss Francis? <laughs> and he thinks that's legitimate, too, don't <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, uh, I'm sure that Bennett is thinking of the inimitable quite miraculous, Charles Lawton, are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Burgess, I want you to meet Mr. Lawton, with whom uh, we're you playing. Know, <laughs> we have the time for the first act now. I'm so happy to meet you. <laughs> I think it should be noted for the record that Mr. Lawton and Burgess Meredith are both playing in Major Barbara, which is showing here in New York, George Bernard Shaw's play. Yes, Mr. Gallagher. You know, Mr. Lawton's so elegant, and for a moment, under the blindfold, he sounded exactly like a dead-end kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'll uh, say this. Nothing got by him, because Bennett no more had asked that double-truck question of Mr. Lawton. Okay. That's two questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have one question I want to ask you, sir. I don't suppose there is a more familiar scene, at least certainly for my generation, than that wonderful scene in, in Henry VIII when you're enjoying your viands. And oh, I wondered uh, if, if you would have gotten thoroughly sick of all the uh, comments you heard about it or whether you've ever been attacked by mothers because it taught their youngsters to pick up chicken legs and gnaw on them or anything that's like that. A, that's a very, very long ago. I hardly remember. I know there was a time when I couldn't go into a restaurant but the, the, the waiters didn't move all the knives and forks out of the way. <laughs> chicken in front of me. And with good reason, John. That's quite enough from you. <laughs> John, Next John. Tomorrow I, I upstage you. I'd, I'd like to say one word about Mr. Lawton as a book publisher. Mr. Lawton, I think you've done more for the cause of good books in this country with your readings and almost anybody I know. Thank and you, we're sir. all very grateful to you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. to get me right off, of course. No, no. Now, that's, that's where we get our splendid little pleasures out of having Burgess on, and then you, you see, not have Burgess have any idea what's happening. I really didn't. I had but, no idea. You generally talk a lot louder than that, child. <laughs> <laughs> and on <laughs> that more. <laughs> on that happy note, sir, may I say we thank you very thank much you. for taking your time to be with us. Thank you. Now, Burgess, it's been fun having you with us, but I must repeat, it's good fun to have had Mr. Lawton here and have you fooled completely by it. I certainly was. I hope you had fun being with us. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene. Good night, John. Good night, Burgess. It was nice. Come back again. Thank you, and good night, Doris. Good night, Thank Burgess. You. Good night, Bennett. No, I thought it was Freddie March for a minute. Good night, John. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Bennett. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. 
American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagship. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS television network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's great new television program, Gunsmoke, Saturday night on this same network.